Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this really cool old style trestle table that can work as a editing table or a computer table. And you can build this using hand tools and three simple power tools. A circular saw, a cordless drill, and an orbital sander. So let's get started. So I started by designing up a trussle table that would be simple to build using 2x6s and even a 2x6 as a trussle and 2x2s to support it. I'm going to also use a door as the tabletop and then I'll build a shelf on top. This should be really pretty easy construction. So I've picked up some really basic materials like some 2x6 by 8 foot pine, some 2x2x8, and also some 1x8s to help build the top shelf of this design. Now, it's going to be a trussle table style, which is really quite easy to build. It's very sturdy, and it makes a really good solid table. For the top, I really wanted to go simple, so I picked up a hollow core door. Now, I went to the big box store and found one that was bigger than the one I want, but actually they don't make one the size I want because the table actually is going to be two feet wide by six feet long. So I would have to have trimmed the top off anyway, even if I could have gotten a 24 inch one, but I didn't. So anyway, this was damaged. They knocked some of the price down for me. So I'm going to be able to cut it down to size, re-glue some of those sides back in it, clean it up, and it's going to give me a nice, stainable, finished surface to work from. Okay, now I've cut this from both sections. Let's see if I can tear the part I just cut and slide that into the place. Now that I've cleaned out all the cardboard, push that back, and then basically trimmed off the wood, I think we're ready to start gluing it into place. Let's just start carefully gluing it back into place and setting some clamps on it. Now keep in mind, you want to avoid getting any glue on the surface as much as possible because that's just going to be more that has to be sanded off so that your stain will accept it. I'm going to keep working my way down through this. You don't have to put all these clamps on it. I have them. I put it on. You could also just use some of that other lumber to set on top of it as a weight. So anyway, I'm going to let that set up overnight. Then we'll start cutting all of our materials tomorrow to start putting it together. Okay, I've let this set up overnight. So it's time to start pulling all the clamps back off of here. we're ready to move to the next stage of this. Now going off my basic plan that I've laid out, I need to build the top piece for this. And it needs to have the side pieces to go in. I'm going to push that out to the edging of the door to help support its strength because that's where most of the strength is with the door. So I picked up a 1x8 which is 7 and a quarter roughly and a 1x6 which is about 5 and a half. Now I'm going to use this 1x6 to be the, the height of the shelves. And what I want to do is cut that at an angle that all I have to do is slice that, slice this and reverse these and I can have as many of these as I want. So if I go 7 and a quarter and then, like I say, I, I need to determine how much angle. Now, I'm thinking probably an angle of about something 
like that. But I should make it to where it's an even, well, that would be ten and a half. So now we know here I got ten and a half. So now if I go to the top, I should be able to mark that where I want the next cut. Be there. Double check here. Seven and a quarter. So that gives me two of them. So now I'm going to do the same thing again. A quarter. So that's going to give me one, two, three, four. And I've got room to cut an extra if I need one, but I'm not going to do that yet because I may end up using that for something else. Now this board which will be the top board, I'm going to cut it down an inch under and that's going to allow me to have just a little play of safety back and forth when setting this on the top of the on the top of the, the desk. I can get out the saw and we can start cutting these. Okay, so these are all now cut. But you know, now it makes me think I may want to take the saw and put it on a slight angle and match this angle here just to give it a little neater look to it. I don't know if that's possible to do it with the hand saw, but what the heck, let's try it. Okay, I'm going to try cutting it. I've set this saw to an angle and I clamped this down. So hopefully it's going to stay well enough and let me do it. So let's give it a try. Okay, I think it worked. We'll be able to set like that and have a very flush, even look to it. I'm <laughs> I'm really happy with how that that worked for doing it with the handsaw. Yeah, I'm going to use this as the lower trussle for this. So this needs to now be basically the same length as the same length as the. Um, the table. I may make it an inch under so it, it doesn't protrude. So we can go ahead and cut that. Now these are going to be the top and bottom under the desk like the truss. In order to do these right, I want to make them probably 23 inches. That keeps them down just a little bit, uh, short of being directly the same width, but enough to give you the strength of it. So let's cut those. Okay, now we're going to line up and I'm going to cut these two by two to be the uprights. We're going to need four of them for each of the uprights. Now I'm going to cut these at 30 inches. That's going to be a little high. In fact, maybe I should pull it back down a little bit because I want the tabletop to be right around 30 inches. It's an inch, so I could go 29. Let's go 29. I know that's kind of an odd height, but you're making this custom for yourself, so do it, make it how it works best. Now I have three eight foot lengths that's gonna give me a little bit of a spare, and I can cut off anything that I don't like, like some knots over there. But I do think I'm gonna cut them at the same time if I can. So here we go. Okay, 
so I I think I've got all of my pieces cut. I'm ready to do some sanding. So we can start doing a little sanding with the orbital and get this thing ready to start staining and the next steps. Okay, I'm moving this outside so we can start sanding all of the wood down. I'm actually going to use a pretty coarse grit because I'm going to for kind of that um, Spanish mission style and sometimes that does have a little bit of a, a a rough look to it. Before I start sanding, I'm going to take a wood rasp and I'm going to start knocking some spots off the edge of this along. This is going to give it kind of a used antiqued out or a uh, uh, relic look and, uh, and I'll do that all with just using a basic rasp. I've sanded everything down, except for I started thinking I wouldn't mind putting a second shelf on the the top piece that will hold the monitors. So this is all I have left of the board, but I also have this piece that I trimmed off with the circular saw on that same angle as the front of each of these. So you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to laminate that to the front of this and make an extra shelf in there and utilize some of the materials that I've got. Should work. I'm going to be using some Star Bond uh, super glue in a super thin. This is great stuff if you're wanting to to get wood set really quickly and it holds well and it does really well and I'll put a link in the description down below and I think you can still get a discount from that link if you order from it. This is really good stuff. Now you could still use tight bond with this. The difference here is you're just going to have to wait longer and I don't have the patience and this stuff is fantastic. It comes in a thin, a medium, and a thick version and also you can use an accelerator that you sp spray on before. It's good stuff. Give it a try. So now I'm going to glue these pieces up. So I'm going to take each of these and I've, I've set this on top of a couple of two and a half inch blocks so that I can use that. And now I'm just going to take some of this thin glue and put some of that along here like so. And then I'm going to take this, the accelerator, I'm just going to dust that like that. I'm going to set this on top to get that setting up. It only takes a second. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then shoot a little accelerator on there. Put this down. Bring this in. See if I can walk that down. There's that. A little better stability. I'll set this up. And then right on the back, I'm going to mark it here and here so I know where that's got to fit. So now I'm going to flip this up. I'm going to go ahead and use the thin glue again. But if you have time and you want, you could also use the tight bot. I'm going to run a bead of this. This right here. The accelerator, real quick. My spot. Like that. And I'm going to bring this, this up, 
and drop it down here where I want that for there. I am going to set a couple of finish nails. I'm going to take a punch and just countersink these a little bit. That way I can sand or putty these a little bit, sand them, and they'll they'll work just fine. And I'm gonna set this up on the end. I'm gonna want it to set inside about a quarter of an inch. Okay, we're gonna start staining this now, and I'm using Varathane's oil-based stain. You'll want to stir it well to make sure you get all the pigment up off the bottom of the can. This goes on really quick and easy. I put some paper down underneath it because it can be messy and also using some latex gloves. Once you've covered every side of this, I'll then let it set up for a few minutes and then I'm going to come back with a clean rag and wipe it down. Look how the grains start pulling up and looking really good with this. You're going to want to continue this process through the rest of the staining of all the raw materials on this. And that includes the desktop as well. But don't stain the sides. I'm going to show you what you'll do with that in a few minutes. I'm going to let the uh, stain just kind of soak into this door for a little bit. I don't want it to be spotty but I want it to have a, a rich color and I'm afraid if I take a rag to it now and wipe it off it's going to make it much lighter than what I really want so we'll let that kind of chill for a little bit then I may take a rag and just kind of lightly dust it off. And I can tell already that I'm going to want to be careful and try to keep this going with the grain. But, oh look at that. That's This is bringing this out really nice. I like I like how this is this is looking. That's... I'm going to take some of this polystyrene. Now you can buy this at the big box stores. This is an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, excuse me. And by a quarter inch, it's great stuff. You can work with it real easily and it cuts, it drills. It's, it's, a, it's a great product. And I'm going to drill this out and I'm going to put some wood plugs in this to make it look like rivets. Similar to the um, refrigerator, steampunk refrigerator I did. I'll put a link up here in the top so you can check that one out too. So we're going to measure this off in, from center to six foot one half inches because the material is a quarter inch thick so that's going to allow for a quarter inch over and I'll miter cut that to fit. So the front will be six and a half inches, the sides will actually be 24 and a quarter inches. Something you're going to want to consider picking up is just a little miter box frame. These are cheap and expensive, that, but they work great for cutting trim. If you're doing trim around like uh, baseboards around your house or anything like this, this works really well. You can use this with a simple saw and it will get more precise and you don't necessarily have to have an expensive uh, chop saw. doing here is just scoring this so I can heat it up and bend it. I'll want to put a rivet on each side of this. So I have the two side pieces ready to drill, the two braces, and the long piece. So I'm now going to set up and drill those to fit this hole. I'll This is 
the little wood plug that I told you about and there will fit just perfectly down in that hole and we'll come back and glue them in later. So now you're just going to take this and just take a knife and just kind of hack up the edge of it. Just occasionally. Not everywhere. Just to give it kind of a, a roughed out feel. I've got these all drilled out now and I'm ready to start setting the plugs in these. But before I start doing that, I want to actually use those to help me to secure these to the top. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to pre-paint and spray all of this and these as well and then glue them in after it's installed. Okay, so now I'm going to go outside and spray paint uh, all this material and I'll use some gray, some black, and a little bit of a bronze tone to give that that metal feel. So I'll be right back. I'm actually really excited how this is going to start coming together. So this has got a nice look to it. One of the biggest things to remember is try to use the same brand of paint with what you're working on and that way you're guaranteed that the paint will adhere, will work well with each other, especially when you're blending that all together. I'm going to take these, throw a little heat on them where I've already grooved the back of these. I'm going to set this up, heat this up, and get a bend around these and let's see how that goes. If you don't have a heat gun, a hair dryer will work just as well. works so incredibly well this makes a perfect uh, like a hinge style joint so that's gonna work so now after I have bent these over these are looking good I think I'm gonna give them a little bit of a copper spray this is also part of the rust-oleum paint and that'll give them a, uh, a little difference from the rest of these and help them to stand out with the corners I'm excited. Let's uh, let's start putting this thing together. Everything is dried up on this, so I'm ready to start putting it onto the door. Now, what I'm going to do is use some like liquid nail or construction adhesive. In fact, I even have a partial tube of flexi glue that my son gave me as a gift. So once I have uh, this glued down, I am going to take and put small wood screws into each of these holes to help secure the material down and then I can put the uh, rivet heads over the top of that. I'm more interested in making sure that I keep the glue though away from getting on the front of this. That's not going to look good if I get it there, so I've got to be very careful with that. I put it down just like this. Come across. Take one of these with the tapered end. Fine. And I'm going to set it. gluing up the back of these wood plugs and setting them into the holes and then just using a soft mallet tap them in there. Once you have those hot glued in they're not going anywhere and you just move all the way around the desktop and it gives it a really cool old iron rustic iron look. So I'm gonna just take a cloth and just kind of wipe this down. I'm going to use Varathane Triple Thick Water-Based Polyurethane for the top. I think that's going to, to work better. And this is supposed to be a self-leveling. Now when you're painting you want to make sure you as much as you can 
go with the grains of the wood as you see me painting it against the grains of the wood there you'll see the bulk of it should just kind of flow right along with that and with this I think you're going to really you want to work in about a 12 inch square area and try to flow it out make sure it looks good it actually looks a little bit milky that's okay because it dries clear you want to keep what's called a wet edge and keep, keep your paint or your your clear flowing on this if it's starting to drag on you it means your paint is starting to to set up too quickly and you'll end up with flatter looking edges See, let's run right under each of these. I've put two coats on this and I'm not totally happy with it. I love the sheen. I think the sheen's doing fine. But it's going to need a little bit of a light sanding and I'm going to have to flood one more coat on this and really kind of try to get this to, uh, to smooth out a little better. So I'm going to use some 220. I'm going to make sure I put enough on here so that it really kind of floods out or it's, you know, this is supposed to be a self-leveling, so I need to make sure I give it a chance to self-level. Okay, I've got everything pretty well cut, stained, clear coated. We're ready to start putting this together. So what we're going to have to do is drill all these pieces and then bolt them together. Now I bought just regular uh, bolts and nuts for this. So I don't really want shiny uh, on there. So I'm going to take them outside and spray a coat of flat black on it. I think that'll help to work with the metal that we did on this and give it that design that we're hoping for. One thing I think I'll do though is because without with only using a cordless drill you need to make sure you're drilling a good straight hole each time. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill a template that will be the exact from the bottom with the two holes pre-drilled that I can then set on top of each of my boards, clamp it, and pre-drill those and that should help to keep me lined up fairly well. Okay, this is going to be to the front and it's to the top. chiseled out part, so I want the chiseled out part here to go with that. So I fit these in. Here's the first one put together and I think this is this is coming together exactly the way I want it to. I think it's very strong. It's it's gonna it's gonna work it's gonna work pretty cool. 
one word of thought is when you're doing this, keep your, your holes as tight as you can. This thing is tight and it made it a little difficult to tap in, but we got through it. Just be ready to make any adjustments, but for the most part, that's exactly what we want. Let's put the other one together. Now that I have the basic side trussles ready to go, I'm going to go ahead now and install these levelers for the feet on these. This is going to help make sure that no matter, because wood can be wood and sometimes not be perfectly straight, this will help level it out and make it easier to set up the desk. I've set this in place and just put a couple clamps to hold, help hold that into place while I kind of set this in and decide my distance on these. Then I'm going to set this one up over here and I'll probably use some clamps again to just hold that into place. Make sure I have the fronts in the right place because those are the ones with the all right let's say seven on that come back here and look at this i think we can work with seven because i can adjust this one inward so i think the trick right now is to make sure that i have this in the place i want that to be square with a carpenter square to help make sure that this is in the right place. I should be able to just use this same uh, template that I made for cutting earlier and set that into place just to drill my basic holes. This is the same height as everything I need on this and so long as I keep it consistent we should be fine. I picked up a longer paddle style bit that I'm going to try out that should be long enough to get me through all of these boards and that'll help with the uh, setting these into place. Okay, I've got the trussle part completely put together. This thing is strong. I could probably park a truck on this. I don't think I want to park a truck on it, but I wish I owned a truck because then I'd want to park my truck on this. So now we'll put it down and set the top on it and see how it looks. Okay, I'm going to bring the base in. I've got the base set into place. Next is to bring the top down and to make sure I secure that down properly. I'm so excited about this table. This is going to, to just work out so well for me. I need to secure the top and the shelf down to everything so it's good and solid. I picked up a combination of some black painted L clips that will work underneath to help secure that down. But on the sides of the um, shelf, they need to be close enough to pick up right inside that wood on that. I'm actually going to use some little three quarter inch brass brackets. I know they'll show, but you know that kind of ties in with the corner brass pieces on this anyway, and we'll be okay.
Okay, then I'm going to put do the exact same thing on the other leg, and then we'll set the table on top and put our screws up this way. Okay. Now I'm going to scoot the table over that until this drops just down in there, like that. This comes with the shop cap seal of approval. Old world craftsmanship. Combined with turn of the century industrial design. Relic finish. It's almost as if DIY Gene collided with restoration hardware. This was a really fun project. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think or if you've got some ideas. And in the meantime, I'll see you soon.